Thank you, everybody. Welcome to Ziva Spotlight, where we feature the people who power Ziva. Ziva is the leader in indirect spend management solutions that optimize the entire procurement process. With Ziva's data-driven spend management solutions, you can simplify, consolidate, manage, control, and conduct all spend-related activities in one place. Our end-to-end -end integrated cloud-based platform drives cost savings, visibility, and efficiency gains throughout the procurement process. For more information, visit ziva.com. Today, we speak with Uli Mensch. Uli serves as Executive Vice President, Operations and Professional Services here at Ziva. Over the past two decades, Uli has held leadership positions at various consulting and technology companies in Europe, North America, and Asia. He has an extensive record of advising clients on their technology and business transformation initiatives. Uli holds an MBA from St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia and an MS in Engineering Management from the Mannheim University of Applied Sciences in Mannheim, Germany. He's an avid cyclist and runner. Welcome, Uli. Thanks so much for being on the show. Well, nice to be with you, David. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about your corporate journey and how it brought you here to Ziva. So my corporate journey basically is, um, is centered around large global companies. Um, <clears throat> I spent many years at SAP. Um, uh, I think most of my professional career, I spent, I spent it with SAP both in North America and in Asia. And actually, I started with SAP in Europe um, and uh, also worked with IBM and with Deloitte Consulting. So always in their respective technology practices. So I've always been, for the majority of my career, very close to uh, working with customers in technology-centric fields. Right on. Yeah, that seems like you have a very extensive background. And um, what brought you here to Ziva? Well, I, I, you know, with all that background, uh, working for large global corporations, um, I have my, I, my my nature is very uh, restless and and probably my my biggest weakness is a lack of patience and you need a lot of patience when, when working for large corporations and I was losing that patience more and more and then when the opportunity came around to work for Ziva I was really attracted by the uh, spirit, the entrepreneurial spirit of this uh, startup organization and, um, you know, was on the forefront of uh, procurement technology with uh, AI components, machine learning algorithms to, to really make better use of data and data oftentimes being a big challenge in pro for procurement organizations. I knew that from working with many, many customers around the globe and, uh, what attracted me was that Ziva was tackling this, this uh, challenge that almost all procurement organizations are facing. So it was an ex exciting opportunity for me to step out of the big corporate experience, use my experience, but apply it to a much more nimble and smaller organization. Yeah, that's what's cool. I, I do like that about Ziva. Like we can move quick. Um, it's it's definitely different than a massive corporation, and we have a lot of uh, capabilities that other big corporations just can't can't do quickly. So that's that's cool, and that actually leads directly into the next question: what uh, what makes Ziva a great company to work for? Well, it's really the agility of the organization, the ability to adjust the strategy on a moment's notice. Basically, we're paying close attention to what happened in the market what uh, we hear from our customers, what we hear from our prospects, from our partners, and we can adjust. And large organizations just cannot do that, and especially not that quickly. So we can implement changes immediately. And it reminds me of this book, Fail Fast, Fail Often. And that's what we really practice here. And two, two examples come to mind. When we realized that uh, one of our strengths being our um, short time to value, we try to uh, cut our deployment of our procure to pay solution uh, dramatically. So we looked at uh, all the ways we can streamline and we were able to cut it down to four weeks. And we also created an express buy solution that we are now uh, marketing 
And, and that's just that's just phenomenal that we're able to, to turn around and say what our customers really need, how can we meet those needs uh, better? And, and, and it leads to a new solution. It needs to a new concept of in, implementing a solution and um, uh, changing our strategy. And within weeks, we, we had this new offering uh, ready to go. Uh, the second example was when we realized that uh, our solution suite basically lacked the execution piece after analyzing spend data and being able to, to understand where procurement organizations need to make changes, uh, really um, consolidating suppliers, for example, you know, what you need is you need to be able to identify, um, you know, your supplier base, you need to identify, you need to be able to uh, basically run sourcing events. And we used to have a solution for that. Uh, we basically uh, put that for various reasons on hold, but um, as a as an agile organization, we were able to revamp that. And we were able to shift development resources to, uh, create a new generation of a sourcing application. And within two quarters, we had that uh, ready to go uh, to market with. And it's been a hit um, ever since. And our customers love it. And uh, we have a much better solution suite. Uh, and it was really based on making quick decisions and executing quickly. And, and that's um, another example that I think where Ziva stands out and what, what makes me really happy working here. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like one of the big differentiators. You, you say it basically two quarters, a brand new solution was in, uh, created and implemented. And uh, and so so as far as differentiators, besides the agility of Ziva, what is there, what else would you say differentiates Ziva from its competitors? Well, for me, uh, who is focused on our customers, uh, in, in, in with a focus on professional services and customer success, I would say really the number one uh, item on my book is the short time to value. And so we're, we're not only providing the insights uh, in a matter of weeks, and we're not only implementing the systems in a matter of weeks, we basically, do, you know, we're doing this in a matter of weeks, what takes our competitors months and even years. And, and that's, I think that's a, um, that's easily to be taken for granted when you work in this organization, but in the market, we hear this from our prospects again and again, they're, they're shocked to hear how quickly we can, we can turn. And that to me is number one. And uh, the number two is just making sense of what we call imperfect data, right? Which is really a big challenge for procurement organization. Our ability to leverage technology to improve data quality, to provide analytics capabilities that let you make better decisions and ultimately, uh, you know, get better deals with better better suppliers. Um, you know, not only reduce your spend but also reduce your supply chain risk. And um, and I think that's just phenomenal. And, and uh, the fact that we can do this quicker than anybody else is, uh, I think, a, a great difference. Oh, those are great differentiators in my book. Now, what, what are a couple of ways that we can reduce uh, supplier risk? Well, first of all, we have a, um, we have a supplier marketplace where we have access to supplier data, where we, where we look at uh, supplier performance and uh, we see how they are doing. And uh, depending on how they are doing, how they are, how other customers, are, how happy other customers are with them, uh, we, can, we can look and we can, uh, we, we can propose these suppliers to uh, any of our other customers. And those customers then can take advantage of a larger market of supplier suppliers a larger, basically a, a larger a field of potential suppliers that they can evaluate. So they don't have to, you know, Google, um, you know, who, who can provide um, PPE. We can give them pointers. We can say, hey, you know, we've worked with a number of suppliers that you should look at. And, um, and that is something that, um, that is critical. And, and uh, especially today where 
Um, we see so much with disruption in the supply chain, uh, having alternatives and not just, not just alternatives, but vetted alternatives. Suppliers that we we stand behind, that we know are really good and are uh, have a have a track record with us and with other customers of ours. That's that's a that's a big uh, value add that we can provide. Is that our network effect? Is that what that that what we're, we're talking about? The network effect of all the people that we actually all the suppliers in our network can actually become of service to our new customers coming on board if they if they need um, competition. Exactly. You know, from yeah, then then they then we it ups the competition, so people can now compete. So our our new customers can actually be saving more money by or just making sure that their current suppliers are the best price for them. Right, they can yeah. fish in a bigger pond, and we give them the the equipment to identify where the where the where the biggest fish are, where the best you know the healthiest fish live, and and uh, we can connect uh, we can connect them. Awesome. So let's move a little bit to uh, this new normal of, of working, uh, remote work. So how do you uh, keep your team motivated and facilitate cross-team functionality in this new normal of working remotely? Well, we've been, we've been in a virtual setting, in a, in a pretty much 100% virtual setting since the start of the pandemic, I think April 2010, 2020 was when we closed our offices and we didn't know for how long we would have to do that. And we're still, we're still operating in, in that virtual environment. And I, I'm really proud of the organization and, and every one of the team members who are able, who were able to make this work without really dropping the ball and without missing a beat. And how does that work? Well, it's, it's a lot of communication um, that, that we're using communication technology like like Zoom, like Teams. Uh, we chat a lot. We have a lot of uh, video calls. Uh, we we we're doing happy hours. Uh, we're trying to to do these happy hours across team so that people um, have a have a chance to get to know each other. And then uh, every now and then we try to have in person meetings, in person uh, dinners, and and. So that helps a lot, and I've uh, I personally have had um, experience with that for probably the better of ten years. When I started, when I started uh, running teams with um, uh, basically global presence, and uh, when you have um, when you have people in in Japan, China, uh, India, uh, Europe, and and the US, you have to make it work. And luckily, today we have much better technology, and and I think the pandemic has has accelerated the development of of better communication tools. We're taking advantage of, of of those, and I really must say I'm so proud of the team that has been so flexible and and you know changing their way of working overnight, basically, and um, still not really missing a beat. Always having our customers. Um, front and center and, and trying to help uh, help them and, and, and make life better for our customers. And um, yeah, we're able to, I think we're a proof point that, that virtual settings really do work. Yeah, I mean, good point. And, and it's it's all about communication. I mean, I, I know when, when you're going into the office, there's still, if there's lack of communication, in-person offices don't even really work. So, you know, you always need communication, whether you're in-person or whether you're virtual. So that's a very good point. Um, we do stay in great contact. Uh, we have a lot of ways that we all communicate and connect. So, yeah, absolutely. That's great. Thank you. What are some of the things outside of work that have motivated you to continually be successful uh, in your career? That's a good question, Dave. Um, I, I think a lot of my a lot of who I am was formed in in my during my teenage years. Uh, as a my childhood dream was to be a competitive cyclist to do bike races and i did that for about 10 years and uh, this this those 10 years have taught me a lot early on they taught me a lot of discipline and to uh, to train hard and and um, uh, most importantly it taught me to uh, set ambitious goals if you really want to achieve 
uh, big things, then you have to set a goals. You have to have clarity around what your goals are. You need to uh, describe these goals, make, make them as, as tangible and as um, visual as possible, uh, and then make a plan on, on what you need to do to, to, to get there. Um, and then once you have a plan, execute that plan. And that's where the, the discipline comes in, right? To, to really uh, get on the bike, uh, rain or shine, uh, snowstorm or hailstorm, doesn't matter. You get on the bike and you, you just uh, you do train. And if you can't do it today, you, you better follow up tomorrow. You do more tomorrow. And then uh, you see the results and you, cele uh, you celebrate wins um, as much as you learn from, from fails. And, uh, but the number one thing to me is to the laser focus on the goal. And that's kind of how, how I learned from early on uh, key lessons that are still applicable today. And, and um, I, I think a lot of my way of um, working is, is really rooted in, in that experience. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. When, when you set goals, do you have different timelines of goals? Do you say, do you have like, uh, uh, do you set multi-year goals and then bring them back? Or like, do you have a goal setting process? Yeah, I think, I mean, it, it depends, right? I mean, you may have, you may have really uh, uh, long-term goals, right? So in 10 years, I want to do X, Y, Z. Right, then um, you probably want to break that down. There are probably certain milestones that get you there. Uh, another thing where I learned a lot in uh, in my career was when I uh, when I became a product uh, a project manager. So I learned a lot going through uh, the kind of the the art and science of managing projects. So I, I went back to school and I um, I, I got my certification. Uh, from the Project Management Institute. And I learned so much to uh, also applying this, right? And it has a lot to do with, with communication again. And, um, and uh, the, the, the breakdown of, of, of work, you, the process of, of uh, building a plan and then executing that plan. Uh, but I can give you an example. Um, a few years ago, I really um, decided to pursue a a bucket list dream of mine, which is um, to participate in a race called uh, the Race Across America. So that's a 3,000 mile race from the US West Coast to the East Coast. Wow. And it's been uh, in, it's been held for the last 40 years. This is the 40th, 40th anniversary this year. And um, what it really requires is um, to have a plan how to get there. You have to be physically super fit. You have to be you have to be uh, organized in terms of um, the, the crew, the support crew, and um, all the planning around this. And you break it down into, into work packages, right? One per work package is the, uh, the, the training, the, the bike training. Another work package is the logistics. Another work package is, uh, you know, working with, uh, working with um, uh, support organizations and so on and so forth. Um, but on the on the uh, training side, the key is really to have a, a plan and things that you can measure. So I have specific goals, uh, specific targets and milestones. So one of the milestones is end of March or between the beginning of January and end of March. I knew I needed two 2000 miles um, of training. Um, and then between uh, April 1st and the event in June, I needed another 2000 miles but with more intensity. So I have a detailed training plan and I'm executing this training plan on a week to week basis. And, and you can see like how I break down these things, right? I had this dream um, probably more than 10 years ago to, to participate in this race. Then uh, two years ago, we really kind of um, started planning, assembling the team. And then, uh, and then uh, uh, late last year, we, when we when we were able to confirm all the support team and the the riders, uh, we started then building training plans and logistics plans and so on and so forth. And uh, on the training plan, right, I broke it down not only into you know into multiple months sections, but also into weekly sections with um, specific targets. So I know exactly at the end of the week. Am I on track to, to meet my, my milestone? And if not, what do I need to do to, 
um, change my plan to catch up and and uh, you know for example you have a week of bad weather what's the what's the plan b right and it's the same thing in business right if if you can you can plan a, a project and then there are certain things that come in unexpected so you need to be able to to uh, deal with these challenges and quickly ha have a have a good team together that can work and, and reshuffle things to to deal with the challenge uh, and ultimately you know be able to catch up to meet a certain deadline and, and so on and so forth it's cool everything. because you're able to take you're able to take your work experience and utilize that in your in your personal goals too because you know some of the things that you've learned through project management are actually able to come into setting these big life goals and so it, it's not always starting on your personal life bring it into your career sometimes you know what you learn over the course of your career can really uh enhance the goals that you set in your personal life that's pretty magnificent so so you've been planning this for 10 years and you're gonna do it this year yeah i think it was a dream for 10 years the real plan started last year and I'm, I will be doing it uh, starting June 18th. Yes. How long is that going to take you? It's uh, we plan to do it in 192 hours, which is uh, seven days. Wow. It would take people longer than seven days to drive across. The well, we we do it with a team of four uh, to full, full disclosure it's not a solo i mean there is a solo event um but uh, okay so it's kind of like a relay it's a, a relay so all uh, you know full disclosure i'm only riding you know about 750 miles uh and everybody oh, else my right? three other team members will will do the same thing hopefully but if you know if one of us doesn't feel good the other three know they have to pick it up Right. Yeah. So that's um, the, the contingency plan and you have to be prepared for for the. For well, that's benefits. nice, too, because, you know, I think that's the other thing about working together. You know, you're creating you're taking an individual sport and making it into a team sport and 750 miles. I mean, goodness gracious, that's a lot, too. But um, but now now it's you, you are relying on others because, you know, at work, we got to rely on other people like we can't do this alone. I don't think we can really do anything uh, impactful on our own. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a few things, but uh, but that's really cool. So it's a it's a team sport, and you're going to do the team is going to ride th over three thousand miles in in seven days. Correct. Yes. Wow, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> and we hold that. each other accountable every week, right? How much have you trained? Because we. Oh, the same thing. I mean, it's a, it has so many parallels with uh, our work experience here because we are in different states. We don't train together physically. We, we train together online uh, and we update each other. We keep each other uh, abreast of our progress. There, uh, there's great technology available that lets you track all of this. And so we can really rely on one another because we don't we don't want to get there in uh, in June and realize that one of us is not in in good enough shape because that means that the other three need to pick up the the slack and that's uh, that's not a good start. It's going right. to be hard enough, but um, yeah, that's awesome. So you could utilize technology, teamwork, planning, goals. I mean, all in, project all in management, virtual setup, all, all in virtual. The virtual. Exactly. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, awesome. Well, thank you for sharing all that. That's really cool. I, I, I it's fan, fantastic that you're doing that. Goodness gracious. That's, that's, a, that's pretty amazing. Um, so let's, uh, let, let's get on to some, some tips for if, if, if you, if you had any tips that you could give to procurement professionals that you think would help them succeed, what would be a few tips that you could give them? Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, coming from Ziva and, and with my background or with our background, I would say first, first and foremost, make technology your friend. Mm. Uh, automate things as much as possible, um, uh, especially, you know, where many of our customers face a labor shortage. Um, uh, I, I, I just remember, you know, one of our customers 
they, uh, you know, they have 16 plans that running on different systems with different processes. And there's no, you know, there was, there was no visibility into what these plans really uh, spend in detail, in what, in what categories. I mean, we, they knew how much they spend, but they didn't know in what categories and, and with what suppliers. And uh, so uh, it took them a lot of time to analyze the data uh, from, these, uh, from these individual systems. And, and they don't have that time. They don't have the staff to do that, right? But, uh, you know, we can, we can help a lot of organizations out there to automate that process, to, to um, uh, ingest data from various different uh, systems and then uh, uh, enrich the data and classify the data, leveraging our intelligence and, and, and our machine learning um, processes. And then uh, we put it in, in, uh, in beautiful dashboards and um, we can not only show them wh where they spend it, but we can help them to make better decisions. We can also help them to uh, create compliance around, around common processes um, to make sure that uh, they're buying from from catalogs, they're not they're reducing their their maverick spend, and um, and we can do that quickly. So the tip to procurement professionals is to really uh, before you scramble uh, and uh, and uh, try to make things work with uh, you know with the current challenges in in labor shortage with um, supply chain disruptions. Look at technology and see what um, what how technology can really help you do your job better. Yeah, that's excellent, and that actually goes. It kind of almost answers the next question. But uh, what are some of the biggest challenges facing procurement departments today, and how does Ziva address those challenges? I think you kind of went through that um, in, in regards to tech technology. I mean, we have so much data. Every company, every company collects all their data. But the question is, how do you how do you analyze it? How do you go through it? How do you actually pull valuable insights from it? And I think the the larger companies maybe they have solutions for that. But there's a big group of companies out there, mid range companies and uh, smaller companies that don't really have um, the capability or the the idea on how to analyze their data to, in order to enhance, find new savings opportunities. So maybe you can address some of the biggest challenges facing like mid-sized companies uh, in the procurement departments today. And how do we address those challenges for, for not the big enterprise companies, but for smaller companies? Yeah. Well, it's a good point. I mean, I've, I've uh, seen uh, companies that don't even collect data, David. I've seen wow. companies that, that create POs on on X, in, in in Excel, right? And then these Excels are being uh, uh, saved as PDF files and sent to suppliers, and you know nobody really knows what what happened, and um, uh, so they didn't even collect data, and and that's mm -hmm. kind of um, the reality today is that. Uh, also, as, as a result for, of restructuring, as a result of mergers, acquisitions, and, and, and a lot of changes that organizations go through, um, they, have, um, they have a lot of challenges related to disjointed systems. Uh, and, uh, and, that's, and that's something that we feel very confident that we can, we can help them with. Uh, but, but then the other challenge is that that, that they face that we probably can't help them so much with um, are, you know, rising co uh, commodity price prices, uh, supply chain disrupt disruptions, maybe, maybe suppliers uh, going out of business or being in, 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 in financial trouble um, or, or having, having trouble with their supply ch chain themselves. So um, uh, not to mention the labor shortage that we had uh, uh, really alluded to before um, technology can can help here and um, and especially for mid-sized companies they usually don't have a lot of time and they don't have big budgets and that's really our sweet spot right we, we, we offer really very very competitive solutions in a quick turnaround uh, and uh, and that's I think what our current customer base is really appreciating how quickly we were able to help them to 
uh, improve the performance of their organization. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, fast and uh, and at a better price than most of the other. A um, lot more 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 value um, for the for the price. So, what advice would you give new recruits who people who want to enter the procurement space? Is there any advice you would give people wanting to get into this business? Well, I mean, it's, we hired a lot of young folks from 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 school, from uh, you know, with business degrees, but also with computer science degrees or other degrees. It's critical to really understand the value chain in an organization, and um, and and really. Uh, put yourself in the shoes of a procurement professional, and that that will take that that takes a lot. Uh, we accomplish that. So for, for someone with a computer science degree, we have courses on our internal learning platform called Ziva uh, Ziva University, where you can you can read up and and listen to uh, a great content around. Um, the procurement function in an organization and how that fits into the broader value chain in an organization and how that fits into a broader supply chain uh, picture. And, uh, and, and it's really about continuous learning and uh, the ability to, to relate to, the, to our uh, audience, basically, which are procurement professionals and, uh, and to talk to them and to ask questions and to better understand what they are struggling with. Um, so it takes, it takes curiosity, the, the motivation to learn, um, to continuously learn, uh, to read a lot, and to develop relationships with your coworkers, with your customers, with partners. Yes, you know, we can, we can learn from one another um, and we can apply these learnings. And it's really, to me, the number one thing is to never stop um, being curious, never stop to learn. Absolutely. Good point. So um, just a couple more uh, questions, which you, you probably, I think you kind of touched on them before, but um, maybe we can talk about a few uh, customer testimonials. Like what do some customers like about our products and how do we help them solve their problems and create savings? Give you a few examples. Um, one from a from a company that um, that we helped run uh, sourcing events. So they are using our sourcing platform, and we were able to um, to help them save a quarter million dollars within a matter of weeks. So you can imagine that the person we worked with, uh, the head of supply chain in this organization. Uh, he became a superstar, right? And uh, uh, he uh, was celebrated as a hero, basically, to help the CFO to, to um, you know, to improve the, the bottom line. And uh, and that's that's just uh, phenomenal. And the uh, uh, another another example I can I can give you is a, um, an organization, a large service provider that is dealing with many large uh, co companies. Um, in in the US, and um, <clears throat> when they get a new client, um, uh, then they they basically take over operations and uh, the data uh, management for for that client. And uh, so you you know think think big data sets. I mean uh, uh, you know historical uh, procurement data sets of hundreds of thousands of records. And sometimes in very very poor data quality. So they take on a new a new client, and they don't they have histor historical data, but the data is so bad that it doesn't really tell them anything. So we have a multi year content uh, contract with them to um, to basically improve the the uh, to improve the quality of hun hundreds of thousands and millions of records, and we've we've already um, uh, you know. Process millions of records for them, and and uh, they've said we've 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 been we've really made a huge difference in their ability to serve their clients, and uh, especially launching new clients with the with the increased enrichment of their of their catalogs has been a game changer for them. Um, so that's something that um, maybe not everybody sees uh, when they look at uh, uh, when they look at Ziva, right? The fact that we are we're really improving data quality as a as a service here, 
and uh, that goes far beyond our software, but it's also pack a part of the of of our spend analytics solution behind the scenes that we do this auto classification for them. And um, it's not just they are providing data; we put it, we we consolidate it and put it in nice dashboards. We're also improving the quality of that data for them to make better decisions. Um, and uh, we've had we've had uh, especially you know, tremendous feedback as it relates to um, savings as a result of, of, of auctions and RFX events that we that we performed or were performed on our on our platform with the leverage of uh, marketplace suppliers that that we could provide uh, new suppliers that 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 uh, were able to provide better services at a, at a better cost. Um, but last but not least, the one thing I, I wanted to add um, here is uh, one of our large enterprise customers just recently shared, they said, they, said uh, they always had um, auditors asking many questions as a, as a result of the annual, uh, annual financial re reviews. And he said that, uh, you know, since implementing Ziva's procure to pay solution. Uh, now they have zero questions for for the procurement organization because the processes are being followed. Uh, everything is very transparent. Uh, data is, a, is is readily available, and um, and that's just uh, he was he was very very happy about that. He said, you know, you you saved me a lot of headache with with my auditors because now uh, they they don't focus on me anymore. You know, because we are we're we're good. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, yeah, saving money is good, but saving headaches is also really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, before we end up, uh, so real quick, back to cycling, like what what I know a lot of times when you're doing big goals like this, that there's a lot of metaphors for life that you can learn. There's a lot of things you could probably pull from from the intensity of cycling that, that, that would apply to your life. Um, what is it that you enjoy most about it? And, and, and what has it taught you about yourself? Yeah, well, uh, it, it interesting, <laughs> interesting question. The metaphors in cycling, I would say, um, you know, you have, you have ups and downs, right? You have, um, in, in cycling, the ups are different, uh, kind of maybe the, 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 the reverse experience from, from the ups in, uh, in business, right? But let's say you have a hill in front of you or you have a mountain to climb and it's hard to get up there, right? And it may take you an hour. I remember riding up uh, Mount Evans in, in the Rockies, uh, it took me three hours to go all the way up to 13, uh, 14,000 some feet. And it got really cold on the top. It was uh, 67 Fahrenheit in the bottom. It was um, uh, 28 on top. Uh, and it was a difference of 7,000 feet that, that I climbed in those, in those three hours. So it was really hard. And I knew, um, I knew it would would be hard. I didn't know how cold it would get, and how and how uh, how tired I would get after like two hours. Um, and I still had another hour to to go, and it got more windy and more cold. Uh, but you have to be you have to be focused. You have to have the eye on the prize. And yes, it would have been easier to turn around, but I wanted to see that. I wanted to see the the, the summit. And it was an amazing feeling to see the summit and to uh, to kind of uh, you know try to put on my my gloves and my my windbreaker jacket um, because I I could hardly move I was so cold uh, but then it was a it was a one hour downhill and that's you know you enjoy basically the the fruits of your labor uh, and all that hard climbing basically became a fun ride downhill. And, uh, and so the metaphor in my, for me is, you know, you, know you, you have certain goals. It usually, it's painful to get there. It's, it's, not a, it's not a walk in the park. If it was easy, everybody else would already have done it. So a lot of things that we're, we're, we're doing is, is hard. Uh, it's, it's much easier if you have a team to, to do that. Um, and uh, in cycling, uh, uh, the concept of drafting becomes really, really critical, especially the, the, the faster you go. 
and uh, and that's the benefit of having a team where every, everybody can pull and, and, and when you are in the draft, it's so much easier. So I think learning from one another and leveraging the individual strengths of each other, having a diverse, diverse team where you have people with different strengths that can, you can cover different, different uh, bases. And that at the end of the day, you can rely on one another. That's really, really critical. That's so much easier to make it up to the summit. And then once you get there, you know, there's always a little bit of uh, of, um, of a celebration. And as I said, right, it took me three hours to get up there. It took me one hour uh, joy of, of going down. Typically, the celebrations, the party, the uh, the party is not as long as the uh, as it took you to get to get there. Uh, but uh, it's it's um, it's my metaphor, right? So things are hard, but there is once you once you get there, there is a lot of satisfaction from the achievement. And I always tell my team to to reserve a few minutes at the end of the week and then um, reflect on what you did in the week. You know, what are the things you could have done better, right? What are the learnings from from failures that, that we can apply next week? But also, what are the things that really went well? And we're in such a fast-paced environment. Oftentimes, we we don't even have the time to celebrate. But make mini celebrations for yourself, and and really, and and really share with the rest of the organization. Hey, you know, we we just accomplished this, and 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 there's so much to be proud for, and proud of. And um, and I really encourage any anyone to to take a few minutes every week, every Friday afternoon. Uh, before you shut down to say, hey, what, how did the week go? What went well and what did not go so well and celebrate the wins? Yeah, that's great. It's kind of like getting the reps in too. You know, it's also bringing to mind, you're not going to get up that mountain the first time you try it. You know, maybe the first time you try it, but you know, you, you that wasn't the first time you wrote. You know, it's like you need to under, I think a lot of people maybe need to understand that it's not, nothing good is supposed to happen tomorrow like by tomorrow like when we start like it's a it's a process you know getting to where you could actually get up that mountain in three and a half hours it probably took you maybe years of training yes I mean, how, you know i mean if you but, didn't have years of training you wouldn't even have been able to get up that mountain at all exactly probably. yeah mm -hmm. and without the proper tools you know you probably had to have the right bike you had to have yeah. the years of training and it's uh, so so just it's more of the long game it's uh, kind of having that longer term goal and then making all your little uh, daily and weekly reflections, you know, make sure you do what you got to do that week, but then reflect back on it. And uh, all those little steps like build on each other. And, and that's, that makes it to where you could do great things. So. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Julie. This has uh, been a, been a fun talk and I really appreciate it. No, this was fun. Thank you for having me, David. Yeah, absolutely. So, Is there any final thoughts you have that we didn't kind of hit on, or? No, I think we 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 talked uh, about a lot of things, and um, uh, I take I take you know for, for me the 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 wins are when I talk to our customers, and and you know uh, they do have. Uh, things that they they would like to see differently, and they have ideas, and we cannot always meet their um, their their wish lists and so on and so forth. But in the grand scheme of things, uh, when I talk to them, um, I hear so many positive things, and the the areas that we have helped them with, and uh, making that them a more successful organization, a more competitive uh, organization, is just. Um, uh, you know, it uh, it really makes my day every time I, I talk to customers, and um, and I I really want to thank uh, the entire Ziba team for making this possible every day. And uh, you know, you guys get up and 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 uh, train for the for the mountain climb, and um, we're do, we're in this together. And uh, it's it's really for me uh, a great experience, and I I really appreciate being here with all of with all of them that's amazing yeah it's it's definitely there's a there's there's a big fulfilling aspect of a company when you see how you're actually helping other other companies i mean being able to actually help in a in a, in a strategic and specific way um 
gives gives that sense of fulfillment and working together as a team. It really is a great team here at Ziva and uh, and uh, everybody works real hard. So awesome. Well, thank you so much, Julie. This was great. All right, David. Thanks a lot.